How's it going? Mike with MaxSonics here today to talk to you about the MX-1. This is a premium high-to-low level converter. When most people think of a high-to-low level converter, they think of a converter which is dedicated for factory radio systems. But in this case, the MX-1 is special. It can also be used in an aftermarket head unit setting where your aftermarket head unit only has one set of preamp output RCAs. You would use the MX-1 converter just like you would if your aftermarket was a factory radio. Locate your front and rear, left and right speaker outputs from the head unit and connect those directly into the MX-1 converter. This will then give you the opportunity to have front and rear stereo control as well as subwoofer RCA outputs. The first step in your MX-1 installation is locating your factory wiring harness. Your next step is identifying your front, rear, left and right positive and negative speaker wires and then the corresponding connections on the MX-1. Now that all connections have been made from your factory radio harness into the MX-1, you'll see that there are two locations that are empty. Those two locations are if you have a factory amplifier in your system with a subwoofer output that would go into this. All the way over on the right you're going to see a black wire that goes from radio chassis ground to the MX-1, so now your MX-1 is grounded as well. Alright, now we're focusing on the other side of the MX-1 for the remote output, which will turn on the amplifiers that you have connected to it. Here is the battery power. Battery power needs to have a 5 amp inline fuse at the front battery within 6 inches. This is a remote in. The MX-1 features audio sense capabilities. This will allow for you to not connect a remote output from the head unit to the input on this MX-1. The MX-1 will instead turn on whenever it senses signal coming through the high level speaker outputs from your factory radio and it will stay on for 60 seconds while you have no audio. Then it will turn off which in turn will turn your amplifiers off. Then this is your battery negative. So we're going to make those connections now. All right, now the remote output has been connected to the amplifier. Your positive constant and ground are connected to the MX-1. You're ready to proceed to your preamp output stage. We have our front RCA outputs, our rear RCA outputs, and now the sub RCA outputs. Connect your front right output and front left output to your input, right and left. Your rear right and left. Two channels three and four, right and left. And your sub out. to your sub amplifier input. The adjustments on your multi-channel stereo amplifiers are extremely important. Your first setting is your mode, which should be switched to four channels since you're providing four channels of signal input. Next will be your high pass. We'll keep that at minimum, which is 10 hertz. That'll allow for 10 hertz and above to be reproduced. Crossover settings should be at full range on both sets. Low pass should be adjusted according to the speakers in your installation. We're going to go ahead and turn it all the way to the right to allow for all the frequencies to come through for our example. Next adjustment is bass EQ. That should be set to your preference. And the final adjustment is the level control which we'll set to approximately 12 o'clock to ensure that we have clean output from the amplifier. All right, your next step will be your adjustment on your mono amplifier. We're going to start with the low pass. And in most installations, you can start at approximately 80 hertz, but you should definitely refer to the subwoofer speaker manual that you're using. Subsonic will go to approximately 3 o'clock. Base EQ, we're going to leave at zero. Phase, we'll leave at zero. And level, we'll go approximately 12 o'clock. 
Now that you've completed all the adjustments on the amplifiers, you're ready to make the adjustments on the MX1, which will give you complete control from this unit. The first adjustment that you're going to make is the high level input control. This will be for both front and rear channels. In Mercedes and BMW, uh, also other amplified factory systems, you're going to be near 40 volts. And a standard factory audio installation, you're looking at approximately 9 volts. The next adjustment will be your front high pass filter. This should be adjusted to whatever the safe frequency is for your speakers to play lowest to. We'll assume that you're using six and a half, and that would be approximately 45 hertz. We'll assume the same for your rear high pass filter. And this will allow for all frequencies from 45 hertz and above to be reproduced. The final adjustment for your front and rear stereo outputs will be the output level. This should be adjusted to obtain optimal output with a clean output signal from both your head unit, which would be approximately 70 to 75 percent of the maximum volume, and with your 12 o'clock position on your mono amplifier as well as your stereo amplifier. So this setting will be the variable in your installation. The first setting that needs to be made when you are working with your subwoofer output to your mono amplifier is determining the type of signal that you are feeding into the unit. In our example, we're going to use four channel mono. That means that it takes the high level inputs and auto sums to give you your fifth channel output. If we had high level input with a factory BMW or other factory amplified system, then we would switch this to high level for our subwoofer input mode selector. All right, your next step in working with your subwoofer output will be the subsonic filter. The subsonic filter should be set to a point where the subwoofer and closure combination can play down to. We're going to select approximately 30 hertz in this. Next adjustment will be your low pass filter. It's always nice about 11 o'clock, so you're looking at about 70 to 80 hertz. Now we'll adjust the subwoofer input level control, and since we know that we're using the four channel mono input, and it matches what was coming in on channels one through four. We'll go ahead and adjust to that point, which was about nine volts of signal input. On your parametric base EQ, this allows for you to select the frequency of boost. We'll go with about 45 hertz. Select the range of boost, which will bleed above and below. We're going to go 12 o'clock. And then adjust the amount of boost. We'll do approximately 9 o'clock. Your final adjustment will be your subwoofer output level control. Once you have the factory radio set at approximately 70 to 75 percent of your max volume and you have your amplifier set and everything is set on the MX1, this will allow for you to adjust while listening and watch your clipping controls. As you're making your adjustments, you'll see that the clipping control will begin to show a pre-clip condition, a soft clip condition, or a hard clip condition. As you, soon as you see yellow for soft clip, you know that you need to back it down just a hair to get into a safe operating condition. If you ever see red for hard clip, your amplifier's probably gone into protection and you know that you've turned it well past the capacity of either your amplifier, subwoofer, or electrical system. The MX-1 also features the MXR-1 remote, which has the clipping indicators that are shown on the unit, so you also have this at your fingertips. When this is set all the way to minimum, the output for your subwoofer control will be whatever the MX-1 is. But as soon as you turn this on to minimum and you hear the click, you'll see that your volume is severely reduced and you'll have complete control up to the max setting that you've already established on your MX-1. So you should never be able to exceed what the MX-1 has been set to, so that will reduce your clipping and protection issues.